Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Checkmate Martin Shanka wins 2018 Red Bull Air Race. First images of prototype Marine One helicopter released. And worldwide Avion excels, up 15.5% from last year. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's November 26, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Martin Shanka has won the 2018 Red Bull Air Race World Championship, following a nail-biting final race in Fort Worth, Texas. The pressure could not have been higher for the Czech pilot, who was last to fly and had to win the race to win the overall championship. This race was incredible. It couldn't end up any better than this, he said afterwards. It was a beautiful race with everything in it. As I came into the last flight, I had a clear head. I knew that Matt Hall had flown a fast round, so I knew that I had to push a little bit and definitely not make any mistakes or penalties. And that's what I did. Shanka was one of the favorites to win, but as he entered the final leg of the 2018 Red Bull Air Race, the point spread meant any one of the three pilots could win and take the world championship title. Matt Hall and Michael Goulian were both in with a chance. But with Goulian knocked out in the semifinal round of eight, it went down to the wire for the last race of the day. After the break, SpaceX announces new name for BFR. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero newsnet With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call around the patch. Elon Musk announced the new name for the spaceship and upper stage of the BFR is Starship. Musk announced the name change in a tweet. Initially, he tweeted that the plans for the BFR Starship are accelerating as plans to make the Falcon 9 second stage reusable were being dropped. A later tweet offered some additional insight. Technically two parts, Starship is the spaceship in upper stage, and Super Heavy is the rocket booster needed to escape Earth's deep gravity well. The 300 airline pilots of Sky Regional Airlines have joined the Airline Pilots Association International. An overwhelming majority of the pilots who provide regional service for Air Canada Express filed membership cards with the Canada Industrial Relations Board last month, seeking ALPA as their legal bargaining representative. Today, ALPA is stronger with the addition of the Sky Regional Pilots, said ALPA President Captain Tim Canal. A group of nearly 150 aircraft fuelers have authorized a strike against their employer, escalating their fight for a first contract with Swissport. The workers who fueled nearly all aircraft departing from SeaTac International Airport have been working to negotiate a first contract since voting in March to join Teamsters Local 174. Progress of negotiations has been slow and difficult. Former NASA Administrator Mike Griffin has publicly opposed the concept of a lunar gateway, calling the concept stupid architecture. 
Griffin, who was NASA Administrator during the George W. Bush Administration, said that it is his personal belief that a return to the moon in 2028 does not demonstrate that the United States is a leader in anything. This is 2018. It took us eight years to get to the moon the first time. And you're going to tell me it takes 10 to 12 to 14 to do it again. When we know how, I just want to drop a flag on the play. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. If you've been wondering what the new Marine One helicopter may look like, some newly released photos will give you an idea. The images show a prototype of the new Hilo landing on the White House lawn. A NAV Air spokesman said that the photos were captured during testing on September 22nd. NAV Air is leading the development of the new aircraft. The images show a Sikorsky VH-92A helicopter and the traditional presidential airlift livery. A spokesman said that there isn't a part of the helicopter that isn't tested, down to the paint. We took delivery from Sikorsky in August and began testing. The aircraft designated engineering design model is the first of six that will participate in the flight test program, which will include design, certification, and testing of the replacement helicopter to support the Presidential Worldwide Vertical Lift mission. The drive cites a GAO report that indicates the aircraft's impact on the White House lawn is an important part of the test regime. Deployment of the aircraft is expected in 2020. The Marine Corps currently operates 11 VH-3D and 8 VH-60N helicopters. Both models are military certified aircraft modified to perform the specific mission. The VH-3Ds were originally placed in service in 1974 and the VH-60s entered service in the 1980s. After these messages, worldwide avionics sales up 15.5% over last year. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We our Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. AEA has released its third quarter 2018 avionics market report. In the first nine months of the year, total worldwide business and general aviation avionics sales amounted to 2,001,676,685 dollars and 92 cents, or more than $2 billion, as reported by the participating companies. The figure represented a 15.5% increase in year-over-year -year sales compared to the first nine months of 2017, amount of $1,732,915,016.06. .06. Sales during the third quarter months of July, August, and September in 2018 were $679,774,995.03, a 15.6% increase compared to the 2017 third quarter sales of $587,941,517. Year-to-date, both the retrofit and forward-fit markets have seen double-digit increases in sales compared to the first nine months of 2017. The forward-fit market was up to 16.6% compared to a year ago, while the retrofit market has increased 14.7%. Of the more than $2 billion in the sales during the first nine months of 2018, 57.3% came from the retrofit market, while forward fit sales amounted to 42.7% of sales. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airport Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 
alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday, and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.